Wrestling fans, welcome to the fourth installment of MWFI Talk Radio. I am Dan Marotti. It is Sunday, January the 29th. I have been asked to disclose that the news may be MWFs, but the opinions are mine. Um, another interesting week here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation, to say the very least. Last week we talked about the top ten moments in 2011. This week, just a lot of news and notes to talk about in general. The website, bostonwrestling.com, is back in action. What a pain in the ass that turned into, to be blunt. Um, to have to really ask the fans to get involved. Uh, a super fan, Kenny Lockhart, made a video and sent it to Homestead to have to get the local police involved out in California. I forget where Homestead's located. But in the end, BostonWrestling.com is live. The videos, the TV programs, the columns, interviews, everything that's on there, again, is at your fingertips. We're still having some hiccups with the email accounts. as The Homestead folks apparently have the weekends off, which we don't here in the MWF, or at least I don't. Uh, tremendous interview coming online tonight. I don't know if it's going to beat me to the punch, but Executive Vice President of the Cauliflower Alley Club, Carl Law, would join me tonight. Uh, Carl is a great man. He has dedicated, I believe, 33 years to the CAC, free of charge, as the Executive Vice President. Believe that. There is something in professional wrestling that actually gives back to someone out of the goodness of their heart. That is what the Cauliflower Alley Club is all about. That is something that is near and dear to my heart. And many in the MWF, that is why we've done so many auctions and raffles for them to raise money over the years. Um, why we have a banner for the CAC at the top of just about every page on bostonwrestling.com to try and you know, spread knowledge about the site, uh, the CAC, I should say, and um, have new members join the club. All the money that is raised from the CAC goes towards helping out the veterans, the old-timers that need it. Uh, you know, I don't need to get into specific stories about specific individuals, but, you know, diehard wrestling fans that go online and read about this one is hospitalized, this one's sick, this one lost a limb. You know, professional wrestlers, once their career in the ring is done, have no wrestling income. It's not like baseball, uh, football, other sports, or other forms of entertainment that have unions and programs to help them after their careers are done. So the Cauliflower Alley Club does a lot of great work. I'm very proud every time the MWF writes the proverbial check to give them some money to help out. Well, who? I don't even know. Um, but great interview with Kyle to get fans excited about the 47th annual reunion um, in April. I hope to make it this year. Last year, I think I complained on BostonWrestling.com in my Inside the MWF column about how I was stranded at JFK Airport for two days trying to make it to Las Vegas. There was a um, thunderstorm that went through the area that shut down JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. So everyone was stranded trying to get out. Planes from all over the Northeast were stranded everywhere, and Dan Marotti was stuck at JFK for two days. Uh, they couldn't even guarantee us a seat on the Monday morning flight with some of my physical issues with my back and my feet and so on. I just, I, I couldn't wait overnight in the airport again. It was, it looked like Beirut. There were just people laying, rolling around all over the floor, and it was mass insanity. That was April. It seems like every April there's some kind of an issue around the time of the Cauliflower Alley Club. In 2010, when we were coming back, it was during the... Uh, the volcano that exploded in Iceland and that was a 18 hour four airport trip to get home um, and that was just two days before Soul Survivor 6 so hopefully this year it will be an uneventful trip to get there I think I've earned one it will be so good to see so many great friends um, if you really are a diehard fan of the business or if you are a superstar in the Millennium Wrestling Federation that is not a member I implore you to join the club Membership dues are only $25 a year, which is next to nothing, considering the newsletters you get. Um, the trip to one of the reunions itself, uh, you can't put a price tag on it for what you get. As I said in the interview with Carl, um, the one thing I can say about the CAC, beyond a whole week of activities in Las Vegas, depending upon how long you stay, is that every time I leave, when I get on the plane, I am reminded of why I fell in love with this great sport to begin with. So if you're not a cauliflower alley club, <laughs> I, am I tired or what? Cauliflower Alley Club member. Check out caulifloweralleyclub.org. Um, 
and get the information you need to find out what's going on with the club, the reunion, and all that good stuff. Moving right along, I didn't have a chance to talk about it last week due to the mass insanity going on, but um, the three TNA live events that were in Massachusetts, I had the opportunity to attend all three. Um, I really enjoyed the events. I enjoyed, as usual, catching up with old friends, making new friends. Uh, you know, Al Snow and I have about the same sense of humor, and if you've ever seen his uh, tweets, at, I believe it's at the real Al Snow. And some of his Facebook posts, he is literally out of his mind. So we have a lot of laughs together. Um, and we shut down Kowloon. I think it was the first night they were there. Great action-packed events. Um, one person I really wanted to give a shout-out to that is just unbelievable when, as far as it, when it comes to his intensity and his energy level is Don West. He makes sure those live TNA events are interactive and that there's something going on for fans from the moment you walk into the door during intermission, and then even after the event. I, I, I have to commend the man, and I said that to his face um, on the Sunday event in Lowell. Don is the man. I, I don't know if you remember the sports memorabilia show he used to do locally in Boston back in the 90s, but they used to provide a lot of laughs. And we used to say back in the, the Tony Rumble era that, geez, that is a guy that belongs in professional wrestling, and then eight years later... He shows up on TNA commentary, but what he does with the merchandise and just to keep the fans uh, involved in the event is just out of this world. And finally, I wanted to give a sincere thank you uh, to Jeff Hardy. A lot of people have beaten him up online. He has had issues that are well documented, um, some that haven't been. But, you know, I've never seen, and I, I may take some heat for this, but I've never seen an athlete in this sport as genuine to his fans and as warm to his fans as Jeff was over that three-day weekend. Um, he was beaten up a little bit. He had a, an ice pack on his back going into his pants when he would do the um, in-ring photo ops at the end of the event. Just a, a very, very, very nice person. And it had been a while since I had spoke to him um, after the event on Sunday. I don't want to give too much away yet because it's not Soul Survivor Super Bowl Sunday. Did I get that right? I'm not looking at my notes. Um, but Jeff's hand was signing things, and I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, it was Kowloon again after that, Friday, Sunday, and then I was there again with family members on Tuesday. So it was just a great overall experience. I thank Jeff. Um, again, it was great to see Al, and I was blown away by Don West. Um, so when TNA comes around again, you know, it's a different experience than your typical non-televised WWE card, but I believe it is worth your time to attend at least one, unless you're out of your mind and you want to see all three. That is at your discretion. Uh, let's continue. Road to the gold. I may hate him. The fans of North Carolina love him. Tomorrow, Warhawk Dylan Cage is going to be on ABC Network Television down in North Carolina on a program called Carolina and Company. Um, I don't know if we're going to have video footage of that sometime soon, if it's going to be something that will be available on YouTube. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. He's going to be promoting the MWF Road to the Gold 2012 live event Saturday, March the 3rd at the Fairmont, North Carolina Middle School to benefit the Robeson Rescue Squad. And those are some very, very nice people. No matter what I think about John Cena Sr. and his scam, no matter how much I hate Dylan Cage for what he has put me through personally, I can say that the South Robus and Rescue Squad, just great, very nice, welcoming people. Uh, they make you feel like they want you there. And some of the issues we've had in Melrose with people that haven't wanted us here in the political scene or the real estate scene, um, you know, that's a really good feeling. So I look forward to heading back to the Carolinas where I'm sure it'll be a little warmer than it is here in Boston when I'm back there in early March, a few days before the event. Um, as I mentioned just moments ago, next Sunday, February 5th, it is Soul Survivor Super Bowl Super Sunday. Big superstars, big matches, big surprises. What does that mean? Come to BostonWrestling.com and find out before the big game. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of announcements. Um, as usual, I will not see the Super Bowl. I have it on in the background as I do my MWF studio work. Uh, but it is going to be a big night. 
If you have not purchased your VIP packages yet, you're crazy. I'm not trying to... Well, of course I want you to buy them, but I'm not really trying to sell you on something. I mean, it's just it's a huge value for the pan, for the fans that only paid 40 bucks around Christmas time. For what they're going to wind up getting in the end, probably, it's hard to put a number on it, but at least 200 to $250 worth of stuff. And all the raffles, the auctions. I mean, imagine if you win the Undertaker plaque. I looked on eBay just for the heck of it. Those were selling for around 250 bucks. You could win it with a raffle ticket. The John Cena double matted autograph photo from WWE. You throw that in a frame, that's, I don't know, around 100 bucks. Little Marathis would kill me to get that. Well, I shouldn't even tell them I have it, but hopefully they're not on bostonwrestling.com. They should be doing homework or watching SpongeBob. But nonetheless, next Sunday is going to be a great day. I think it's going to be a fun experience, maybe something we do annually. Who knows? It was an idea I had, and we're going to go with it. Uh, the Sunday after that, Sunday, February the 12th, it is going to be the duo of Ox Baker and Quincy, collectively known as Ox Briscoe's Rocking 80s Valentine Special. They will be singing some songs that will apparently warm and bring love to your heart. I look forward to seeing uh, this half-hour extravaganza, especially after their Christmas special, which uh, gave the holiday new meaning. It is Royal Rumble Sunday today. Um, I was told to expect a big twist during the pay-per-view tonight. My prediction for the winner um, was Chris Jericho. Where it's in St. Louis, who knows? Maybe Randy Orton will hulk up and he will walk away the winner. But there could be a surprise tonight. Um, Royal Rumble is usually WWE's second biggest event of the year. Uh, last year, the Rumble was right here in Boston, and it is the only Rumble in WWE history that featured 40 men as opposed to 30 and 20. The first year, that there was a WWE Royal Rumble back in 1988 when only 20 men participated. It's going to be interesting to see who walks away the, inner, the winner as the road to WrestleMania begins. Speaking of that, WWE is returning to New England in March. Sunday, March the 4th, they're back in Bangor, Maine for the first time in quite a while. On Monday, March the 5th, it is WWE Monday Night Raw, live from the TD Boston Garden. You are not going to want to miss that one. As you're talking about less than a month from WrestleMania. It's going to be a stacked, loaded show. Um, on Tuesday, March the 6th, the following day, SmackDown will be taped live at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, one of my favorite places to go, um, even though I'm not a gambler, believe it or not. Uh, there will also be a WWE Super Show Saturday, March the 17th from what is now called the Dunkin' Donut Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, superstars from both Raw and SmackDown will be competing on that big event. And then on March the 18th, the following day, WWE is back at the Holy Grail, Madison Square Garden, Again, for another WWE Super Show leading in to the big one, WrestleMania 28, live from Miami, Florida on April the 1st. Uh, I can't give away matches, folks, but I've been told that some of the ones that are going to take place on paper are going to be huge. I think this one has a chance to top the all-time record for the amount of pay-per-view buys. Uh, which would break the WrestleMania 23 in Detroit record, which was uh, 1.25 million, I believe. For information on all those live events, how you can order WrestleMania, how you can get tickets to WWE roaming around New England, check out WWE.com. Very simple. Um, look for new episodes of MWF TV coming in mid-February. The Boogeyman returns to action. Both Julian Starr and Scott Reed have asked for an opportunity to showcase their skills. Um, both coming off losses of late, and they're going to have that opportunity. How, I'm not exactly sure as of this moment. We're just about out of time again on MWFI Talk. I enjoy this opportunity to sit here without any stress and anyone bothering me. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Continue to check out BostonWrestling.com for the latest news. Follow us on Twitter. Join us on Facebook, all those great social media platforms. We will see you on Episode 5.